Your next encounter with Jesus. Oh, it could be a doozy. Could be. Could be life-changing. I was thinking this morning about Zach King. I mentioned him before. He's the Satanist or former Satanist, now everyday mass gore Zach King. What happened? One day, it was one moment, one, one encounter that he had that changed everything after being a grand wizard for 17 years and all that. Uh, and it, had, it involved a miraculous medal and Mary and change. Today, you're going to be hearing from Melody. Now, here's, here's another one where uh, into Wicca, basically, she was worshiping the earth. Uh, she had an altar in her living room. She's offering up sacrifices and all of this. This was going on for 25 years. And then one encounter, one moment, and now she's a church-going-every-week kind of person, and one, one moment. And, and Melody was somebody who had no time for God, no time at all. God was the one who allowed her mom to be killed by a drunk driver. He was the one who allowed she and her siblings to be shipped off to dad and stepmom, and things weren't good there, and she was the black sheep. And she, uh, what else? Always tried to kill herself a few times, got herself, uh, well, she's pregnant a couple of times, had a couple of kids. By the time she was 20 years old, then she falls in love with a Christian, and he's got concerns because at the end of life, are they going in the same direction or two different directions? And that brings us to that one moment and brings us closer to that one moment you're going to be having very soon here. The one moment had to do, it was happened in April of 2017, and it was a dream. Maybe it was an answer to a prayer that her uh, husband had had about where she was in life in these ongoing services she was having in the living room. But she had a dream, and she explains it this way. I have a dream. (laughs) Uh, It was a Friday night. Uh, So I had this dream where I'm walking through this flooded town. As we were crossing through town, we encounter this mob of people, and they're pushing this man in front of them. And um, as our paths meet, this mob shoves this man really hard and it sends him stumbling forward to his knees in front of them. So the man, when he was pushed forward, he was carrying a stack of papers and they went flying out all over the place. So I was picking up the papers and gathering them and just handing them off to him. And I get down on my knees in front of him to hand him the papers. And when I hand a stack to the man, I look up at him and our eyes meet. And it's Jesus. I'm on my knees in front of Jesus. <sighs> Sorry. Immediately, I knew who he was. Like, And he, he looked at me with such love, like such love, love I've never, ever seen in this world. And it just washed over me it, like a warm wave. That's the best way I could describe it. It just washed over me. And... And instantly, instantly, I was broken. I was completely just reduced to nothing, taken apart, and then just completely reshaped and remade. But I was remade, and I was absolutely reborn in an instant. I was immediately his, and it suddenly hits me, oh my gosh, he's on his way to be judged right now, like, and, and ultimately <laughs> tortured and then crucified, like, he's in trouble, you know? And so I become frantic for him and he, and I'm like, you know, what can I do? What can I do to, you know, what can I do to help you? And he's like completely at peace, like just at peace. And he says, don't worry about me. I'm okay. It's you I'm worried about. You need to see to that of your soul and those of your children. And it the peace just washes over me and he's like don't worry about me do as i told you now see to it and then my alarm goes off and i wake up <laughs> now i'm a mess <laughs> <laughs> well who wouldn't be after seeing jonathan Romy like that from the chosen right <laughs> she's a mess and now now she's all in now she she starts looking online for a church a nearby church she sees a picture of Jesus online. That's 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 him right there. And she goes to uh, she and her uh, her uh, husband at the time. They they go to uh, a church service. She doesn't realize where she sits. That she's sitting right next to the pastor's wife, and starts talking about why she's there. And of course, then the pastor Joel comes over afterwards and says, you know, what's the story? She says everything she just said there, and 
And he said, well, you heard from the service. You walked in on Easter Sunday. And that means that dream you had, which he said was on Friday, that was Good Friday. You actually had that dream on Good Friday. Another sign for you. And then he said to her, Analyze, keep analyzing the dream. Keep going back into the dream and ask the Holy Spirit if there's anything else there. And she did, and there was more there. These, these papers, these papers. And she realized that Jesus, here he was walk, the, the, the Word, the Word, right? And, and it's our job now to pick up where he left off as he walked this earth 2,000 years ago and to spread the Word. That was more of what she had. And so uh, to continue her story and where it went from there, um, she uh, she headed to church for the, as I say, first time in some 25 years. I started going to church that Easter Sunday, and I've been going every Sunday since. Um, everything I'm feels really, different. Everything is different. I'm different. There's a burning light inside of me that will never go out. And I can feel this. It's like a cleansing fire just going through and burning away all the film that I put there, you know, I've heard people say, I've heard Christians say it, um, how they find it so amazing that Jesus can just walk up to somebody and say, follow me. And they just drop what they doing and they do. And I can say for sure, being in his presence and experiencing him firsthand that I can see why and how he could say, follow me. And people do because his presence is just so overwhelming and it just once it washes over you and you realize who he is you would follow him to the ends of the world if you could and and nothing else in this world matters at all nothing i can testify to the fact that i am the prodigal daughter i am the lost black sheep for sure and he made time to come find me no matter what and I think it's important to know that no, no matter where you are, or what you've done, God still loves you. He loves you. And no matter how buried in sin you think you are or how far gone you think you are, he's right there. And if you just submit, reach your hand up and just ask for him to help you, he's right there to take your hand. Huge moment of encounter for Melody. And you say, well, I haven't had one of those. Maybe you don't need one of those. Uh, maybe maybe you're already there or close enough. Uh, I mentioned Men's Morning Light bubbles up out of the Knights of Columbus. This is the largest fraternal organization of the Catholic Church, some two million guys. It doesn't matter whether you're men or women you know, watch, watching this. But I'm going to assume that there's a mass in your future if you are Catholic. We have something so far beyond a dream and so far beyond a, a, a vision and a miraculous medal. We have Jesus, actually Jesus, within us. I mentioned before about uh, it's this, this power of Eucharist in terms of right after receiving in Holy Communion, how we should use it for what's called predominant fault. It's like, what's the major fault I have that everything else is built on? It's pride, it's anger, it's whatever it happens to be. And, and that's really powerful. And I've been using the Eucharist, if you will, if, you, if I use the word using, I, I've been using the Eucharist for that powerful time of prayer. You're just not going to find a more powerful time than Jesus right there. I'm going to ask you to do something else I've been doing, and I think this was inspiration. Next time you go to communion, and you, and you go through the ritual, right? You take the Eucharist, you chew, you swallow, you, you go into daydream land or to prayer, or whatever you go. Next time, when you're chewing, stop. Stop chewing, just for a moment. Just stop. Just give yourself an awareness of where you are and where he is. Jesus is the one who said, unless... You eat my flesh, you will not have eternal life. You're in that moment right now. You're in that moment. This is the moment. Unless you eat my flesh, you will not have eternal life. And look at where you are. Look where he is. You're in that moment. Pause for a moment. And this is the moment to do the big ask. And where I was led this week was interesting. I was led to fear, paralyzing fear. I was looking at the beginning of this week. I was looking at all the things I have to do. I have to do with podcasts and Men's Morning Light and a book and and, and, uh, and scheduling interviews and a talk I'm giving. And I'm just, I, I went into this paralysis of, am I going to be able to get everything in? It's all fear. It's all fear. That relationship fear, showing vulnerability, fear of having a relationship, a closer one to God, because he might pull the rug out from underneath me. You know, all these fears that we have. And I started 
putting fear into that place, that pause, that Jesus is right there and he's listening real close right then. And that message of putting fear in that spot, in that big ask of him fixing me, fixing you of whatever fears are keeping you from, uh, from doing whatever it is that God wants you to do. And that message was confirmed when, just a few days back, my wife and I were watching, we, and I saw a movie was on I absolutely love. It's called Defending Your Life. It's Albert Brooks. He wrote it. I directed it. He starred in it. And uh, it's, it's a terrific movie. Uh, he dies. He goes into the afterlife. And in the afterlife, you're at this way station before going on to a level of higher consciousness or back into earth, back into this lowly area to go through life one more time, trying to learn something, you know, one of these. But the point being is that he was trying to show a relationship with fear. Because when you are defending your life in this way station, what are you being charged with? Fear. You have a defense attorney, you have a prosecutor, and they're showing like nine different clips from your life to show that you either were or were not <laughs> scared to death in this life and not fulfilling everything. That you're incomplete, basically. You're, you didn't learn a thing. You're still afraid. How many times is the word fear mentioned in the Bible? They say 365, one for every day. How many angels are saying, fear not? Jesus saying, fear not. We are paralyzed by fear. So this movie takes that idea, and you have to defend your life. Were you or were you not afraid? Are you ready to go on or not? Well, where are we now in our lives? No matter how old you are right now, where are you with fear and what you do or don't do with relationships, with work, with God, with fulfilling everything you're here to do? My suggestion, next time you receive communion, stop chewing for a moment. See where you are. See where he is. See, this is a moment to put fear right there and say, fix me because I can't do it. Or if it's something else that's really prominent right now for you, it might be pride, it might be anger, it might be impatience, it might be gluttony. I don't know what it is for you. But put it right there in that pause and let Jesus fix you. Okay? All right, let's pray. All right? We go to Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mary. She takes us to Jesus. Take us to Mass, Mary. Take us to Jesus. Right before we go up, I'm going to you, Mary. This is what I do at Mass now. I go to Mary just before I go up and say, get me closer, get me closer. That's where all these little insights have been coming lately. This pause, this putting, this predominant fault right there. This, this, this all comes from Mary. She's getting me closer to Jesus and the power of the Eucharist. Take us there, Mary. Show us. Jesus, show us where we need help, where we need to be fixed. See you at Mass, and see you next week on Men's Morning Light.